Mr. Speaker, I rise to support this motion to authorize the Minister of Finance to guarantee a loan of $20 million from the NIC to be utilized within the housing and productive sector, Mr. Speaker. By the SLDB, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand here proud to be part of a government that loves its civil servants regardless of the many pitfalls that they may have, Mr. Speaker. Regardless of them being put on I am standing what? here today proud to be part of a Philip J. Pierre administration that will never stand and hold a mic and threaten civil servants, Mr. Speaker, would not put civil servants on some form of notice, Mr. Speaker. I stand here proud to be a parliamentarian, part of a government that will never declare war on the civil service, Mr. Speaker. But rather, Mr. Speaker, this is a government that is compassionate, caring, methodical, and strategic in assisting our civil servants and young people in this great nation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I feel duty-bound to explain and to say to all of St. Lucia again that this is a guarantee, Mr. Speaker. This is because, Mr. Speaker, over the last six months, I've seen unprecedented propaganda being spread by members of the opposition, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I can almost guarantee that they will not go in the public sphere and indicate that this is a guarantee, Mr. Speaker. I can guarantee you that they will not guarantee that it is a guarantee, Mr. Speaker. Because it doesn't serve them any benefit. Because as I've said before, while this government continues to think, to sit down, and strategize how we develop the next generation, the opposition only seeks to win the next election, Mr. Speaker. And I came into this arena, Mr. Speaker, to provide quality representation on behalf of the people I love, Mr. Speaker. And this is what I believe this motion seeks to do, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the exemption of up to 400 uh, exemption of stamp duties, Mr. Speaker, is another stimulus, Mr. Speaker, that will redound to the benefit of the people of this country, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Prime Minister indicated that we are at our lowest unemployment rate, Mr. Speaker, in years, in history, on record, Mr. Speaker. And this relief, Mr. Speaker, for this sector, Mr. Speaker, will only seek to further, further ensure our unemployment rate goes down, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, for the young people who are now going to be exempt of close to $10,000, Mr. Speaker, in stamp duties and other related fees, we know that these individuals will further pump this money into the economy, Mr. Speaker. That saving of $10,000 while you were going to buy only a fridge and a stove, you can now buy a couch. You can now buy, instead of a 20 inch, you can buy a 30 inch television. For some people who have never had, persons like me until in their 30s, a washing machine, they can afford to buy a washing machine, Mr. Speaker. And these sort of sales, Mr. Speaker, will only redound to those suppliers providing employment opportunities for more young people, Mr. Speaker. This is the thrust, the strategy, Mr. Speaker, of the St. Lucia Labour Party and this current government, Mr. Speaker. This is not about fluff and bluff. This is about quality, quality livelihoods being developed in our country, Mr. Speaker. For some young people, the saving from some stamp duties would be down to them deciding that they may just be able to afford a little more clothing, Mr. Speaker. And they may stimulate the clothing sector, Mr. Speaker. They may decide that a nail tech can benefit from, you know, supplying them with those fancy nails, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, 
This only redounds to further stimulating this buoyant economy that the St. Lucia Labour Party is creating, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm also buoyed by the bridging finance to ensure contractors can operate smoothly, Mr. Speaker. The constituency of Grosley, until I interacted with the Honorable Member for Castries, Castries North, and started putting things together as it pertains to the infrastructure of Grosley, never before had I understood the amount of contractors that were in one constituency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this motion will assist these contractors in getting their work done, Mr. Speaker. It will make them more efficient in obtaining their finances and ensuring that employment in my constituency is further heightened, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is the strategy. This is what good government is, Mr. Speaker. It's not about politics. It's about good governance, Mr. Speaker. And every time I speak to young people, I say to them, do you want the fluff and bluff of politics? Or are you interested in good governance? And this is what we are debating here today, Mr. Speaker. Good, solid governance, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is the government who has removed VAT on building materials. And this is a step further, Mr. Speaker, that will ensure that our construction sector is further stimulated, Mr. Speaker. In this presentation yesterday by the governor of the ECCB, it was an eye-opener as we see the tourism sector and the construction sector in St. Lucia continue to widen, expand, and to provide myriad of opportunities for our people, Mr. Speaker. And so, as we continue to ensure that contractors in Morshi, in Labon, Grand Riviere, Grosley Town and the likes are given that opportunity, Mr. Speaker, yes, I can go proudly on the ground and smile, Mr. Speaker. And so we need to continue to stay on the course, Mr. Speaker, and do what we need to do for our people. Mr. Speaker, there's not a lot that can be said about the different struggles and the different times when things may be in abeyance. The fact of the matter is, every single parliamentary rep in this chamber has lamented the fact that there are, not there are times when they don't get the housing assistance, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I am still waiting, Mr. Speaker, as the member for Denry North is. I waiting to. And the member for Denry South is, Mr. Speaker. In a similar way, the member for Viewfort North is waiting for further intervention in housing. What's so what about me? The member for Castry Central, Mr. Speaker, is also waiting. The Prime Minister is also waiting. On himself. <laughs> so I am not surprised you don't get yet. that the member for Shosel Saltibus is waiting. I am surprised. That the member for Shows and Saltibus is not being as patient as I am, Mr. Speaker. I have more than 700 constituents in Grosley waiting for housing assistance. They're waiting. They are beating down my doors. They are calling my phones. And I am still waiting what you give the opposition. patiently. What you give still the waiting. Some members are still waiting what after they stayed the in for six years, Mr. Six Speaker. Years. What you give the opposition? And so, so for me to sit down in this August chamber so and hear one of my colleagues from Shozel Saltibus, I call him a colleague, indicate that somehow he's being targeted, I am shocked because I have to wonder if I'm targeted too. Ask him what he gave the opposition. Because I've been waiting patiently. But according to the member for Castries is we know it coming. <laughs> we come in. <laughs> so Mr. Speaker, I am indeed alarmed that the member for Shozel didn't stand up and applaud this initiative. An individual would have had so many interactions with the SLDB. I would have known what this government is currently doing to ensure that it's capitalized and that it's functioning in the way that it is right now, Mr. Speaker. Brother government for giving him money. That is what honest 
and persons that are not necessarily political, because there are times when I was hating doing, you know, that he was not a politician. But nowhere in the statement did he applaud the government for taking care of the middle class and the working class of this nation through stimulating, stimulating, and stimulating our construction sector, Mr. Speaker. Well, if he did, I would love him to stand on a point of order and give him the opportunity. I would yield my seat to congratulate the government on this achievement. Because this is another step. This is another set of evidence that this is a government that puts people first. And that is the fact. Ask him what they give the opposition. So, Mr. Speaker, so. I would like to continue to appeal to young people to be vigilant. I've heard many persons speak to the fact that the statistics department have put, have arrived at a figure of 11% unemployment. I would like to continue to encourage young people that the stimulation that this government is giving to the economy would benefit those who are serious about developing themselves and this country. If you sit at home, you sit on blocks, and you do not do what you need to do, then you will be left behind. But if for a second you don't listen to the fluff and bluff of the opposition, you get up and you realize that the Minister of Education is opening more TVET opportunities for you to educate yourself, that the Minister for the Youth Economy has given you a platform for your talents, your skills, and your capabilities to be given the opportunity for you to flourish in your own talent. If you decide as a young man on a block in Grosile, in Salty Bus, in Denry, to get up and realize that finally there is a government that has provided an MSME loan grant for you, that has given you a semi-professional football league, that is giving you a semi-professional cricket league coming up, Mr. Speaker. And continue to find creative ways to give you opportunities. If you just decide to take it upon yourself and ignore the noise and develop your skills and your capabilities, you will be employed in this nation. You will flourish in the region. And so, Mr. Speaker, I have no doubt and I have full confidence, and this is why I support this motion to authorize the Minister of Finance to guarantee this $20 million loan to further stimulate our construction sector. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.